So the last few weeks, I've been diving deep into uh, some of the concurrent features coming to React, like Suspense. And uh, it's a pretty deep rabbit hole. And today I want to show you kind of a lower level API. And even if you don't end up using it in your app code once Suspense and, and all these features land, uh, I've been finding it helpful to understand how some of these lower level things work. They help kind of inform the intention behind the higher level APIs. So uh, today we're just looking at this very simple app. Right now it just renders this component and it says the time is blank. So let's go ahead and uh, fill this in with the current time. And we can just call new date to locale time string like this. So we see the time is 304. Now we want this to update every second. So let's use set interval right here. We'll run this once every second and then we'll just update uh, this variable with the latest version of the time. Now, if we refresh this, this is not gonna work. We just see the new time on initial render because this is not in any React state. So we actually need some state for this. So we'll say let now, set now is equal to use state. We'll grab this from React. And then instead of using assignment, we'll call set now right here to update it. Okay, and now we see our time is updating every second. So this works fine for now. Let's come up to our app component, add some new showing, set showing state, which will start off as true. And we'll only conditionally render this if showing is true. And then we'll drop a button here to toggle our component. And on click, we can just call set showing and we'll set it to the opposite of showing. So now if we click toggle, uh, we can see that we can toggle our component on and off, but we actually have a little bug here. And if you've used React, you'd probably expect to see calling set state on unmounted component. That warning is actually not here in React 18, but if I were to log this and then we render our component and then unrender it, we'll see that this interval is just going. So we kind of have a memory leak here and that's because this is a side effect. This really belongs inside of a use effect. So let's drop a use effect in right here. We'll move this code inside and then we'll grab the ID and we'll return a cleanup function, which we'll use to call clear interval passing in our ID here. Let's go ahead and import use effect. And now if we reload, we'll see that um, the setter and all the code in here is running, but it, it stops running once we clean this up. Okay, so our updating clock seems to be, you know, kind of working okay so far. Let's come up here and render another instance of our component. So uh, we see both components are rendering the time, but as I start toggling this on and off, you know, we're getting different versions of the time here and we're even interrupting the kind of currently rendered one. There's just a lot of flakiness and that's because each component has its own version of the time. So this is an example of data that's really more global in nature. You know, the current time from the perspective of the React app should really resolve to the same thing regardless of which component uh, is, is referencing it. And uh, this is really the motivating case for what's called an external store. So it'd be nice if we could move this uh, data outside of React, just set it equal to a now variable, and then we'll get rid of our effect here and we'll go ahead and move this up into a module scope here as well. And every second, instead of calling set now, we'll just set this equal to now like this. Now, if I save this and we refresh, we see that both components, uh, they do reference the same time, but they don't update anymore. They only update when an actual re-render happens, like when I click uh, this button here. They're always in agreement, which is good, but they're not updating. And um, this is really kind of the problem with external stores. How do they communicate to React to trigger a re-render? Uh, up until now, there's been no real way to do that, but uh, we have this new API that lets us do exactly that. So let me show you how it works. In our component here, we're gonna call this new hook called use sync external store. And uh, this comes directly from React. And uh, this guy takes two functions. The first function gives us a way to notify React that some external store has changed. 
Now in this function, we want to actually grab hold of this uh, notify callback so we can call it ourselves. So uh, we'll come up here and create a notifiers variable. And uh, this will be a new set, which is kind of like an array, but it has some more features around object identity and some convenience methods for us. And then down here, we can say notifiers.add, and we'll just uh, save this notify function. And we also need to return a cleanup function from this, which we'll just use to call notifiers.delete, and we'll remove this function from our set. Now the second argument is another function, and this needs to return a snapshot of our store. Well, in our case, the store is just this now property, so we can just actually return now, just like this. And this is going to give us a store right here in our component. So it's kind of bridging the gap from outside React to inside React. And now if we render our store and we reload, we'll see we have the same behavior. We're rendering the time, but it's not updating yet. And that's because we haven't notified React of our updates. So let's come here to where we update now in our interval. And for each use of our external store, we'll go ahead and call notify, which will notify React the value has changed. And check this out. We've got our time updating in both components over here. And I can toggle this, and you will never see an inconsistent state where they're displaying different values because they always point back to this single global variable. Now, if you start looking at some of this code uh, within like the React discussions. This first function is usually called subscribe. So let's just pull this out into a subscribe function, which gets notify. And we'll just move this code right here. And then we can just pass subscribe right here. And that should make sense because this is really how React is subscribing to changes to our external store. Now, like I said in the beginning of this video, uh, this use sync external store hook is not really going to be intended for uh, app developers in your day-to-day -day React app development. Um, but as you can see, by uh, giving us this point of abstraction where React can subscribe to an external store and then fetch the current value, we're able to use normal state that lives out here in module scope that updates over time and trigger re-renders without having to do anything funky like getting hold of a set state or anything like that. And in fact, libraries like Redux and Zustand, kind of all these other state management libraries that uh, have you set a store up outside of your Rack component and maybe change it over time. Maybe you fetch data and put it in a cache. Well, you need some way to tell React to re-render. This is kind of the new and robust way to do it. And again, in our case, uh, the store is really just this value here. It's the string that we return. But normally you would see something like let store equals an object. And you might have some users in here, again, that change over time. So uh, basically, that's the, that's the general idea behind this API. It gives you a way to notify React when there's a change. And then uh, just kind of interestingly, it gives you this other argument, which you provide it a function that it can use to query your store. And when I was learning about this API here, I was kind of curious why this second argument existed. Why don't we just say uh, notify React right here and then pass along the new version of our store uh, just as whenever we're calling notify because you'd think that would be enough for React to get the new version of our state. And uh, this has to do with the concurrent mode features like transitions and suspense that are coming in React 18. In current versions of React that use all sync rendering, you know, you could have multiple components that reference some variable that's external to React, and they would never disagree with each other. You could never get an inconsistent rendering of your app because when React starts to render your application for a given state from the root all the way down, uh, it does that synchronously, right? JavaScript is single threaded. So once React starts doing that work, and uh, no matter how long it takes to render all those components, it's gonna finish in one shot. And so uh, as React is rendering those components, they're all referencing some external state, but that state is gonna be the same value for that entire one shot render. The interesting thing about concurrent mode is that it is adding these features that allow React to actually pause rendering while a given tree is uh, being rendered to the screen. And so React can start rendering some of the components in your tree. It can hit a transition 
or a component that suspends, and it can choose to yield the thread of JavaScript back to the browser while that work is being done in the background. And the browser can respond to keyboard inputs or uh, respond to other user events while that new tree is being prepared, but it's not ready yet. And because now rendering takes time and we have this opportunity, this interval of time where we yield control back to the browser, uh, this external state could have changed and React wouldn't know about it because again, we're not calling set state or anything like that. So because the state of our external store could change while React is pausing to allow these other things to happen, uh, React doesn't want to render half our components using the old version of our store and then the other half with the new version of the store. So that's exactly what this uh, get snapshot function right here is about. It needs to return a cached version of our store that is exactly the same, uh, even in the case where a concurrent feature is being used and uh, rendering of our tree is paused. So uh, it was kind of neat for me to figure this out. You know, again, like I said, this is a pretty deep rabbit hole and a lot of this stuff is, is still experimental. But this is really a lot of the ideas behind the new popular libraries like Zustan and Jotai, how Redux works now. And it's pretty fascinating how by using an API like this, which is going to be tucked behind these libraries, we are able to write code in our components that looks and acts basically synchronous, even though the app is going to get a lot smarter and React is going to get a lot smarter about rendering our app in different chunks at different times with different priorities. Um, so yeah, all that was pretty fascinating to me. If you want to learn more about this, I'll, I'll include some links to some of the RFCs and discussions that I was reading to learn about this stuff. Um, and you can also peek behind the hood of some of your favorite state management libraries, and you'll see them starting to use this API. But this is basically the way to kind of cross the bridge from external state into React. It's kind of cool. We have a new way to re-render our React apps, and uh, I'm excited to keep learning more about all this stuff. So. Uh, hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, if you made it this far, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.